Hi there. Um, welcome back. This is the second video of the ISBE um, Building Performance Modeling video series. Um, in this video, we'll be discussing the use of IES as a building performance assessment tool. And um, we will be focusing specifically on modeling of um, the geometry for, 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 for a building that you will be assessing. Um, I think before we start, I think it's important to just remember, and we've, we've discussed this in class, and I, um, we, I think this is important to, uh, an important reminder that when you're assessing the geometry, uh, the, the building performance in the end, um, you do try and simplify it, and, and we try to remove any extra or, or redundancies in, in the process. But it is important to, to remember that we are looking at a number of inputs that needs to be there. One of them is the geometry itself, which we will be modeling here. The geometry doesn't have much information other than simply the geometry. So there's no material quality in there or users in there or detail about the color even of that of that geometry. It's just simply that. It's just what it is. Um, then you have to locate the project and we then go and I have to inform or, or define a number of schedules or profiles. So how is it used? Who uses it? How many people use it? And so forth. And then one defines the energy and thermal inputs and construction and ventilation systems in the, in the end. So, so just um, those are important aspects to remember. But like I said, we're only going to focus here on modeling. Um, when we model the geometry of a building. I think there's just some important things to remember is we are modeling spaces that are similar in function and attributes, which means if you design a, a, an office building where each, you know, maybe it's an open plan office or it could simply be a number of smaller offices all next to each other on, the, on, the, on, on a single floor, then you might choose to not model every single cubicle um, because that's not necessarily important in terms of the performance of it, because maybe they they are you know they've got the same occupancy density or an amount of people using it, they've got the same material, they've got the same air conditioning system and ventilation rates and so forth that will be defined. So ultimately, you can just model it as a single space. So you you can then choose to model that whole floor as one single space, um, but you might have a floor where two different functions take place. And then you, 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 you can then choose to model the zones differently. What it means then is what we're going to draw is it's, it's defined as spaces in, 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 in um, model it. But um, we, we often rather talk about it as zones to say that there's zones with certain attributes or performance um, characteristics which, need, which can be assessed separately or can be defined separately. And therefore, you might want to model them separately. Okay, so something just to remember. Then next to remember is um, simplify, simplify, simplify. Always simplify the model to its bare basics. You don't need details. We're not going to develop working drawings from these um, IASV models. It's not the intention. Um, so you don't need to draw all the different aspects. Often cases we remove anything that's extra. For that matter, the mullions in the windows, for that, you know, it becomes um, unimportant. Uh, so it's really just as simple as possible because the, 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 the analysis process takes long. And then um, follow a, a rigorous naming convention in the end, um, which works for you in the end. Um, you'll see in the class I have discussed the use of an Excel spreadsheet where you can put all the inputs in, in and define that. And that's really useful to keep track of. And um, one could use that same naming convention throughout so that it's simple for you follow what you're doing. Here we will just focus on how we actually model. Okay, when you look at the interface, um, you'll see that you can define the layers and colors of the, 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 the models or the, the geometry that you're drawing. It's, it's not critical. It doesn't really change much. It's something that I think is useful when, when the projects get complex. Um, it's something that I think we've, we've inherited from the, from the AutoCAD era. Um, so you see you can actually define it and switch it on and off and so forth. But generally, I would advise keep models simple so that you don't need to even get there. What's important here is the grid settings. First of all, you would like to show the grid 
that's important so if you zoom in you'll see this and typically you'll get it at zero point uh, at one meter interval so so note here is works on a me on a meter scale not in millimeters like you find in revit or in autocad like you typically do um i do find a meter a little bit rough as a grid to use and i do find the grids useful to to work with so i sometimes just make it 0 0.5 like half a meter grid you can make it 100 mils grids as well if you need to um it just gets a bit heavy in the end you can do you can you'll, you can go through this in your own time there's some measurements and rulers and so forth that you can use. The next important aspect is the snaps. I think we all know from use that in our um, uh, in, the, in all the the drafting work that we do and um, here again your snaps are relevant. You can define the snaps themselves what they call box here um, and then you can also use the shortcuts. This is for clicking so that it snaps to the grid and then to the end points and perpendicular and so forth. You'll then see this um, geometry that you can draw. Um, generally, I just use use extruded shape, um, but you can also draw more pure shapes and then start extruding them and extending them however you want to. It's it's useful, um, but I don't often. I try to keep it simple. And I, I think generally I've, I've found to in the IES models it's not the uh, it's not as intuitive and easy as SketchUp for instance or Revit. So try and keep the geometry simple don't, don't 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 change it or make it complex think about what it what, what you're trying to assess in the process um but you might have to choose you might sometimes want to actually have a sphere or, or, or curved roof and so forth you can draw the you can draw planes and so forth and then you'll see that once we've got the, the first volume in or this zone then we can actually add windows and doors and so forth in the end okay so you would I typically use um, simply an extruded shape. Note here that this little arrow at the top is our north arrow. It's it's typically north. I think that's a convention that we use throughout. You can define it differently, um, and um, it's not been a problem. You don't have to. This is not. It's not that the models, the assessment changes, the orientation, and so forth. We define the orientation um, with an alternative program, so you can simply just have north up and it should be should be fine um so in this case we will then draw a um, simple office building that's 20 meters it's a bit bigger let's draw sorry i've zoomed in quite a bit it's 20 meters by eight There we go. And there you close it. So you can see there's the geometry that I've drawn. Um, before we go into how you can view it, it's important to note here, um, you can change the naming convention. And this is where you can, so when you when you add the, 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 the extruded shape, you can define that. So, so let's, let's delete this again and then I can show you again what, 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 what takes place. So, as you see, there's no geometry now. I click on extruded shape, and then I can define the name of that zone. And here, here you can keep to whatever the convention is you use. If we if we simply draw on 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 single zones per floor, then you can have something like test floor one, for instance. Um, you can see here I can define whether it's a building space or whether it's a shading the the building adjacent building that would simply be considered a shading device. Or a local shading device in the end and then there you can actually also define whether it's a room whether it's a void and you know I mean, supply plenums and so forth but that's not really critical for you but you might want to use a void when you are defining a, a ceiling void above uh, a space um, last important aspect to remember is when we draw this and this is it's always difficult to understand it and and, they, and, and the jury is still out in terms of that is do we draw it from the interior um, walls so we extrude ex ex exclude any walls itself um, or do we include the walls in the geometry uh, or do we use it from the center of the walls i mean 
I personally feel that on a, on the scale of a building, it's not that big of an impact. Um, we're not working with as much specific um, small parameters, really. Um, but what you'll find is ultimately it what you draw is there for considered interior space. Um, so again, as I'm drawing this now and saying this is a 20 meter, um, 20 by 8 meter floor space that I'm drawing. This means that this whole space will then be occupied. So the project, the model considers that as interior. The reason why it becomes tricky is if I'm drawing more than one space in the end, I might actually um, want to, you know, do one then have a space between the two volumes because ultimately you do want them to be adjacent and actually um, the walls themselves becoming what we call adiabatic, which means that the interior walls do not actually um, impact on the uh, conditions of the the, 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 the interior conditions, so, so and then thermal, thermal performance in the end. So that's why I often think, personally, I think it's in, more important to model the envelope of the, the whole structure. That's really where the gist of the whole, the whole performance sits. The interior walls have some level of thermal mass, um, but these models so far has not been very good with including thermal mass extensively. I mean, often they rather consider it in terms of the envelope itself that, that we're working with. Um, so what you'll see here is, in, in, and, and you'll get to this point, you've now drawn one shape. You'll see that you've got options here in terms of plan, left, right, back, and front. Um, and, I'm, and after this, we'll, we'll add windows and so forth in the next video. But I think just to see, just to show you what you can do then in this, we're looking at this in terms of a plan view, so right from above. But what you can choose to do is also to look at it, for instance, from an axonometric view. So here we've defined it, we've, we've actually drawn it up. You'll also see that the volume itself, this, the space itself, is um, defined in terms of the, the, the height, um, which you can measure um, if you use the ruler here, you can measure the length from one point to the next. Um, and you'll see in the end, it's 3.6 meters, um, which was what we defined it as in the beginning. What is important here is you can therefore switch between these views in order to, to, to view different parts of the, um, the, the, the the building. And then also there's a little arrow here called move down one level. And I think it's easiest to see it on axonometric. It's, it, it moves from this, the whole building itself to this, the, this, the space itself to the wall itself. Which means, and as you can see down here, that is how it's defined, the, the, the zone itself and the walls themselves. So if I were to, for instance, say, okay, let's let's take this and we go to the back view and we choose this whole volume and we say, let's simply assume that there's two floors of similar geometry on top of each other. So I use copy. There's another few options as well, move and scale, and so you can look at it in your own time. It's not complex. Um, and I simply copy that over to the next floor. What do you see? If I go to axonometric, I've got two floors that's now drawn up. Test floor one, and I might actually want to change the properties of this test floor, test floor two. Okay. The reason being that I you know, the naming convention is going to become quite difficult. If I then choose to go down one level, you see I'm focusing on the zone itself. And then I can say, okay, but wait a minute, I want to focus on the wall itself. And I go one, go down one level. So just something to, to consider. Um, good. So you've now at this point been able to draw a basic geometry. You can view it from different points. And um, we will then from here look into how we add windows and doors and so forth and how we can view the basic geometry in our model view in the end. Um, but that will be in the next video.